In this video, we're looking at UFC Nashville. I'm going to look at everything from a DraftKings perspective with you. We're going to talk about lineup construction, contest selection, and have some free money for you, so make sure you watch until the end. As always, you can call me Kunith. Let's make some money this week. If you haven't already, go back and watch the predictions video from earlier in the week. That is a full card breakdown. We talk about straight bets. We talk about every fight on the card. Go check it out. Now, you already know what I have to say before we get into anything. Last week, we showed once again why what we've built here, this channel, what, what we have is a one of one. Look around. Look around you. Look at this. We created it. I'm on my big victory lap right now because you know what we did last week? It's something that people go their whole career without doing once. We've done it twice. We're different. I bought Oscar a bunch of stuff so that he would stop whining about being malnourished and well, what the whole the whole thing about you not having shoes. But big congratulations to those of you that followed the advice, did well for yourselves last week, and put some maloo in your pockets. Now, if you want to take some of those winnings and create some good karma for yourself, you can go to kunithmma.com, grab you up one of those memberships that's going to give you access to the official bets, DFS strategy guide, the PRP, the community, and more. But now that all of that is out of the way, we can get right into the breakdown for the DFS slate this week. We're going to start with value plays. These are plays at 8,000 and below. You're going to need some in your lineup to make things work with the salary, and I got you this week. Now, the first value play that we're going to look at is $7,900 Gavin Tucker, and if you've watched the video earlier in the week, you know how I feel about this fight already. I don't think that Gavin Tucker wins. I actually think that he gets finished in this fight, and I like Diego Lopez on this slate. However, we are not picking fighters. We are picking leverage. We are picking ownership. We are picking upside. So you don't always play the guys you think are going to win. How many times am I going to talk about this? 50 times? More. 100 times? More. 200 times? times more 500 times probably i'm gonna keep saying it until it makes sense for you you could think that gavin tucker's gonna get smoked but guess what if you think that if i think that if oscar thinks that and oscar doesn't think about much then everybody's gonna be on diego lopez at 8300 it seems like a steal for a guy with all that upside and a guy who looked really good last time out if gavin tucker wins it's gonna be on the basis of his wrestling and we've seen him break slates in the past look at 120 points right there 103 points right there he can get takedowns diego lopez Lopez, for as good as he is on the mat and how active he is on the mat, well, the only reason we know that he's super active is because he's cool with being taken down. That's the problem with a lot of jujitsu players is they're okay with the bottom position because he's so confident that he's going to be able to snatch up a submission or at least make things uncomfortable enough for Gavin Tucker where he can put himself in a better position. But if Gavin Tucker minds his P's and Q's, takes him down and is able to stay safe in this fight, he's never been submitted before in his two UFC losses. And you got to think if he's able to get seven takedowns, five takedowns, he could break the slate. You can look at his last three wins and it tells you a lot about what can happen here 120 points 93 points 103 points at 7900 salary if he scores anything around those numbers he's going to put you in an excellent spot and you're probably going to get some really serious leverage over the field if you're playing multiple lineups it makes sense to have some diego lopez and some gavin tucker i think this is a fight that you need to target this week it shows up on the optimal lineup given the price point how many points these guys can score and gavin tucker is super sneaky at 7900 next we're looking at dustin jacoby right below him at 7,800. And I think Dustin Jacoby is a really interesting play this week. Dustin Jacoby has really good output, really good kickboxing. He's going to put a lot out there and he's going to need to because he needs to win the volume game in order to keep up with the power of Kennedy and Sejiku. And if he gets behind in this fight, let's say Kennedy and Sejiku land something big at the end of the first round that steals the round or he's able to use his wrestling to win the round, then Dustin Jacoby is going to pick up that volume. You're looking at a guy who's pretty consistently getting you over 100 strikes landed, like 100 here, 38 here in a first round knock. 153 in a three round fight, 107, 14 in a first round knockout, and then 122 against Khalil Roundtree Jr., and then 96 against Azamat Mirzakhanov. So the volume is there, and if he's the guy landing more strikes, looking cleaner on the feet, looking prettier with his striking, then he's probably winning rounds. And what's interesting is even if he's not winning rounds, he gives you access to a very safe floor if this goes all three rounds. Just look at his fight against Khalil Roundtree and Azamat Mirzakhanov. He loses both of those fights, but he's breaking 40 DraftKings points. And you might be thinking, yeah, but I'm looking for six winners in my lineup. That makes sense. But don't overlook the utility of a having a high scoring loser, even if he is priced higher than a lot of these underdogs. Last week, we had 11 fights. 43 or 49 DraftKings points would have outscored 10 of the 11 losers. The only fighter that lost who he wouldn't have outscored was Jan
Jan Blahowicz, and that's because he's got nearly 10 minutes of control time, three takedowns, and 80 strikes. So when you talk about scoring floor, as well as the likelihood of him not getting finished here, Dustin Jacoby's not the kind of guy to get finished, then you're looking at a situation where he becomes one of the more interesting plays of the slate, especially if we have a card where favorites really show out. He's probably not going to be everybody's favorite play this week, but Dustin Jacoby is going to be one of the sneakier plays and one of the more cerebral plays if you really think about how the, all this can play out. Next, we're looking at Alexa Kamer, somebody who I think has a lot of potential here to land a whole lot of strikes and get a couple of takedowns in this fight and win a decision. If you look at a card like UFC 290, not 291 that just happened, but UFC 290, the highest score was crazy high. There are a lot of first round finishes, early finishes, finishes in under a minute that give you the 25 point bonus on top of the round one win on top of what is most likely a knockdown. There's a good amount of fights that I believe are going to go the distance this week. And even if that isn't the case, you're looking at a situation where the favorites are going to be the ones that are finishing these fights. I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of that from the underdogs. I say that to say this, if Alexa Kamer goes out there and wins a decision, he wins the volume battle, he gets at least one takedown per round and scores you around 80 DraftKings points, that puts you in a good spot down at his price. Now, I'm not going to tell you that he's my favorite play on the slate, but he is somebody who needs value play consideration because he's an underdog. I think he's going to win and he does have access to a decent amount of points. Another value play who I don't think is going to win is Cody Durden. Now he's a value play because of what he can do. You look at Cody Durden's last four wins, 129, 86, 112, 93, anything like that at 7,400, you're in a great spot. Like we've talked about time and time again, wrestling and grappling is the most heavily rewarded fighting style when it comes to DraftKings. Cody Durden is not going to want to spend a whole lot of time on the feet with Jake Hadley, who looks like he's getting a lot better with his striking. I think he's a much better striker in this matchup, and I don't think Cody Durden's going to waste a whole lot of time on the feet. He's going to be shooting for takedowns early and often in this fight, and if he's able to get takedowns throughout these rounds and maybe even find the back, land some strikes from there, he could score you a decent amount of points. I don't love him this week, but he does have value play consideration. Now, Damon Jackson is somebody who's a value play who I actually do think is going to win this week, and down at 7,300, he looks like one of the best plays on the slate. He is going to bring that grappling heavy game plan. He's not going to give up on the takedowns at any point. He's not going to spend too much time striking on the feet. He needs this fight to the ground. He desperately needs it on the ground. And I think he's going to do everything in his power to get Billy Quarantillo down. And we've seen that it's not that hard. And when I say not that hard, I mean not that hard for these elite athletes that compete in the UFC. I don't think I could take Billy Quarantillo down. But we have seen Billy Q taken down, controlled, out grappled. And if anybody's going to do that, it's Damon Jackson. Just look at some of his most recent fights. Six takedowns against Charles Rosa. Two takedowns and a second round submission over Kamawilla Kirk. Nearly 10 and a half minutes of control time against Dan Argueda, and then that crazy first round knockout over Pat Sabatini where he scored you 101 DraftKings points. Damon Jackson can absolutely get you there this week. He's one of my favorite plays of the slate down at 7,300. Lots of value built into his price because of that grappling. Now our next value play is one of the most interesting plays on the entire slate, and one of the most interesting plays we've had on DraftKings in a very, very long time. Rob Font coming in at 6,900 is an absolute steal. It doesn't make sense. This is not a price point that we get Rob Font at typically. We have seen Rob Font score 77 and 114 points in losses over a five round decision. Now as a prediction, I do think that Corey Sandhagen knocks him out. I think it happens late, but obviously Rob Font has never been knocked out before. We've seen him take serious punishment, not give up on himself, continue to throw a lot of strikes and Corey Sandhagen will go strike for strike with you. At 6,900, even if he loses his fight and scores anything like he has in the most recent losses, you are going to have to have him in your lineup he will be optimal this week let me explain because he's so damn cheap at 6900 if rob font goes out there and scores you 80 draft kings points from a point per dollar perspective that would be the same as if somebody at 9500 like tatiana suarez goes out there and scores you 110 draft kings points on one hand that is 30 points different that is a big difference between the two but from a points per dollar perspective it is the same thing you absolutely lock rob font into your lineups this week you can stack the main event in your tournaments and still end up having the optimal lineup. Rare, but it's happened with Rob Font before. Keep that in mind. This guy is not somebody who needs to be priced at 6,900. DraftKings pricing largely goes with the way that the odds shake out, but this here doesn't make sense. If you play other types of DFS, this is like if you were to play NFL DFS and you were to get Cooper Cup in week 14 of the NFL season at around 8,200. But now that we have the value plays out of the way, we can use these value plays to build our lineups this week. But before we do, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment something for the algorithm, and if you want to go a step further, share this with somebody who you know is going to be watching the fights this week and playing DraftKings, because I'm your guy. I'm, I'm your go-to's go-to. Now let's get into your cash game. 
games. And these are your 50-50s, your head-to-heads, your double-ups, great ways for you to build up your bankroll, protect your bankroll, even if the tournaments don't go your way, and something that you can't play enough of. Cash games will set you free, I promise you that. And the way that we build the cash games is going to be no different this week than it typically is. We're going to stack the main event because this is a very stackable main event with Corey Sandhagen and Rob Font. Now we want a premium play, somebody who we know is going to win, somebody that we're confident is going to win. And I think we can go all the way up here to Tatiana Suarez at 9,500. Now we've got 8,100 salary left over. What I'm going to do is grab this mid range, people that I think are going to win, people that could score you a decent amount of points in the process. I like Jeremiah Wells this week. I like Alma Bayev this week. And that leaves us with 7,200. So this is the punt play that we need because we really only need four winners most of the time in these lineups. You have the main event, so you're guaranteed a winner there. Tatiana Suarez is one of the locks of the week, obviously. You need Wells and Alma Bayev to come through for you. So now you need one more, one more person to, to round it out. 7,200 left over. You can take Hione Barcelos because he probably doesn't get finished. Our options are really limited to Hione Barcelos or Ludovic Klein. I wouldn't play Jessica Andrade because I don't think that she's going to score a decent amount of points, not even close to the amount of points either of these guys are going to score. But give me Ludovic Klein in this matchup. Now you don't need to do this. This is an idea. But if you want access to the cash game plays of the week and the DFS strategy guide, again, you can go to KunithMMA.com, check all that out. But if you don't want to do that, you want to build up the bankroll first, then something like this is probably what's going to serve you best in cash games. Now we can get into tournament lineups, your GPPs, the top heavy prize pools, how you win all the monies. I made a lot of money. And how you win all the monies is going to be contingent upon the contest that you're in. If you're in the big contest and you have a perfect lineup, then of course you're going to make a bunch of money. But I see some of you, some of you have sent me four lineups that you had in the big contest and you made, I think, a couple hundred dollars, which is fantastic. Turning a profit in DFS, especially in tournaments, is fantastic. But I'm looking at some of these lineups that you guys are sending me that are making you a couple hundred bucks, which is fantastic again. But I look at these lineups and you guys are killing it. You're kicking ass. But you're in contests that are just far too big where you have to be perfect, where you're playing against people with 150 lineups, people who do max out the 20 max contests. And I'm looking at it versus, say, the $100 single entry, $200 contest, the $330 contest, even the $40 contest, even the $12 single entry contest. I'm looking at your lineups versus contests like these, and I'm thinking you could have made more with the smaller field stuff. But if you're entering five, six, seven, eight lineups into the big contest, you might as well just take all that money, put half of it into your cash games, and then take the other amount and put it into whatever the most expensive single entry contest is, because that's going to have the smallest field of players, giving you the easiest chance to win. I know for some of you that's going to go in one ear and out the other, you're just going to play the big contest because one of these days you'll win. I get that. But I also know that I've gotten countless messages from people saying, I switched to the way that I approach these contests. I paid up a little bit more or I stopped playing all these contests and I played the ones that are smaller field single entry stuff and now I'm winning way more than I used to. Winning helps you play the game longer. Just keep that in mind. Now for your tournaments, what are going to be the more popular builds this week? I think a lot of people are going to want to play Corey Sandhagen for good reason. Billy Quarantillo is one of those guys who can score you a ton of points if he wins. 125, 141, 109, 131. This guy's game log is serious business. Triple digits out of Billy Q is kind of a given, so don't be surprised if he ends up showing up on the optimal lineup, and I think that Billy Q just being who he is with his volume is somebody who's going to get a lot of attention. If we come down here and look at the value plays, I think some of the more popular value plays this week is going to be somebody like Cody Durden, who we talked about before. I think a lot of people are going to get there. I wouldn't be surprised if people started coming down into this range and maybe looking at somebody like a Hione Barcelos. Maybe they look at somebody like Alexa Kamer, given that recent Tanner Bozer performance. 84.50 left over per fighter. They're going to come right up here to Diego Lopez, given his most recent performance. And then Jeremiah Wells is scoring you a lot of points every time he goes out there. This is probably going to be what you see a lot of this week. Not a bad lineup by any means. This is a lineup that could show up on the optimal, and it would not surprise me at all because all guys have a way of getting there for you. There are going to be players that you don't really want to play this week. I don't think you really want to play a whole lot of Kyler Phillips this week. You look at Kyler Phillips in the UFC, he's won four out of five. He hasn't break in triple digit DraftKings points. If he's not getting you 100 points up at 9,000, I don't really want any part of that. Sean Woodson, who has an opponent change, and I'll put all of this up on the website for those of you that can see all of that. Sean Woodson is somebody who's not scoring a ton of points in fights that he wins. 122 against Colin Anglin, but Colin Anglin's not really built for it. And he's way too expensive. When you can get somebody like Tatiana Suarez, you can get Corey Sandhagen around that price. I'm not looking to click the Sean Woodson button this week. Jessica Andrade, I'm not looking to take a flyer on. Obviously, the path to victory is there, but not really somebody I'm dying to play. Nor 
am I dying to play Ode Osborne? But everybody else, in my opinion, is fair game because you can make a case for everybody else. But I'll build a few more lineups just to give you a few more looks and let's go ahead and stack up the main event in your tournaments like we talked about before. This leaves us with 8450 left over per fighter, which puts us in an interesting situation because that means you only need to play one underdog in Rob Font and you know that you're guaranteed a winner from his fight. You can come here to Diego Lopez if you wanted to. You can grab Jeremiah Wells. You can grab the new guy. You can grab Kennedy and Zedjaku. You've left no salary on the table. This might be popular this week because it's just such a logical build. Logic is not always a friend of DFS. I'll tell you that right now, but this is a lineup that looks pretty damn good on paper. If you wanted to get more creative with the stack, I think you could do something like Jeremiah Wells, who is just going to be somebody we're plugging into a lot of lineups. It just makes so much sense. Tatiana Suarez at 9,500. Now you have to play some underdogs. Let's say we went with somebody like Gavin Tucker. Again, don't think he's going to win. Doesn't mean you don't need to play him. And now I've come down here to Alexa Kamer. I've left 400 salary on the table. I've stacked the main event in a tournament. This, no one's doing this. You're paying up for Tatiana Suarez. Stacking the main event and leaving salary on the table, that's different, that's weird, and that's a tournament winning type of lineup. Now, let's say you think Rob Font is going to win, which will definitely put you in the minority this week, but if Rob Font goes out there and wins, if Corey Sandhagen loses, but he scores, say, 79 DraftKings points at 9,300, it's not going to cut it. Let's say you did want to go with Rob Font then. So let's say we put $6,900 Rob Font in this lineup. What else could we do? Well, let's say we came down here and we grabbed somebody like Dustin Jacoby at 7,800. You want to come up here and grab Jeremiah Wells. You grab Diego Lopez. You click the Jake Hadley button at 8,800. You can come up here and grab Tatiana Suarez. And now if you want to dial up some strange, you want to play something that nobody's going to play, you're going to go with Corey Sandhagen just because you're going to need one side of the main event. And this is probably the winning side, even though we're dialing up a weird lineup, this is what you're going to need. You follow that up with Ignacio Bahamondes and you come here to Billy Quarantillo. You've got 75, 66 left over per fighter. So you're going to need to plug some dogs in there for sure. Let's say we went with Cody Durden at 7,400. Let's say we went with Hione Barcelos at 7200 and then we'll come up here and grab somebody like gavin tucker at 7900 obviously for those of you that are on the website you can send me your lineups there's a dm function you can dm me you can dm each other there's a lot going on and that's only going to grow the more that you guys get involved but you can send me your lineups we've had people send me lineups lately and lately we've been cooking that sweet chin music i'll tell you people will send the lineup we'll make one little adjustment together and that is a game-changing swap and they end up doing well now full transparency i am recording this video a few days earlier earlier than I normally do. This video is going to come out later in the week, maybe sometime on Thursday. I say that to say this, if any of these fights change or fall out, I'm going to update the community tab on YouTube about what my pick would be if any of these fights cancel. Or if you're on the website, I'll tell you about some kind of pivots that I have. You're still going to see everything on the site. I'll still be active on Twitter. I'll still find time to watch the fights, maybe. But your boy is going to be busy this week. A lot of things going on, a lot of things that I need to do outside of all this. So if things change, if, if somehow Tatiana Swan as ends up having to fight I don't know, Ben Rothwell this week, and I can't get the news out. Don't get mad at me. And I'm also going to put the underdog fantasy stuff on the site this week. The can't miss slip last week, missed by one because Dustin Poirier got slept. But four for five, and if you did that and you had insurance, you got 10x on your money. Underdog fantasy will match your first deposit up to $100 by using promo code Kunith or the link that's going to be in the description. If you've made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment something for the algorithm. Algorithm and I wish you the best of luck.